Good morning. Uh, excited that we have made it to game week. And, uh, you know, it's been a, a great off season. Uh, really been pleased with the, the growth and development of our team uh, from winter, winter workouts, spring ball, uh, you know, summer, summer program and fall camp. And uh, you know, there's a lot of excitement around our, our football program. Some, some new faces, a new opportunity, uh, guys that will be getting their first experience uh, in, in Doak Campbell Stadium here uh, on Sunday. And, you know, really it's going to be a first experience for uh, the majority of our guys to, for, a, for a sold out, uh, you know, you know, packed Doak Campbell Stadium. And that's something we're all excited about. Uh, you know, it's going to be a tremendous atmosphere. It's going to be a tremendous showcase uh, for, for our program. Uh, and it's an opportunity to, to, you know, give a first impression of what this uh, 21, uh, 21 Florida State, uh, you know, football team's identity truly is. And uh, there's a lot of work to be done throughout the course of the week. Um, you know, we're continuing to, to put the finishing touches on a, on a game plan and, um, you know, the per different personnel groupings and, and things that, um, you know, who's going to, you know, get the opportunity to go out there and, and showcase their skill set and, and uh, you know, playing against a uh, top 10 you know, you know, national power, a team program that is uh, that has been uh, very consistent in a uh, high standard of, of play. You know, very well coached. Uh, they've got new faces. Uh, they've got a, you know, a new coaching, a new defensive coordinator uh, that's going to implement uh, different schemes than what they've done in the past. And uh, you know, we're excited about the challenge that's ahead. And you know, for us, it's just a, a continued focus on our growth, our our development, and to um, to go out there and be as consistent as we possibly can be. Uh, you know, here in, in week one. So, with that, open up to questions. You mentioned Notre Dame's new defensive coordinator, and you've gone up against him before. When you when you face new coordinators at a school, do you try to play the chess match of what would they do with this personnel, or or do they usually stay true to what they do? You know, I think there's going to be a, a be a fair balance uh, with that. And you know, um, you know, we went against each other a couple of years ago. I mean, the, the personnel's you know totally different, probably on both sides. And um, you know, but the, you know. It, it, you know, great coaches can are going to adapt and adjust to to the personnel that they have. You know, obviously you're going to see, um, you know, a you know, probably the the. Uh, um, you know, focus of you know some of the things that he's implemented there in the past at uh, at Cincinnati, but also playing to the to the personnel that he has uh, you know there at Notre Dame. And uh, this is a um, you know a talented group. You know, it's it, it definitely has uh, experience and, and and you know sprinkled all through throughout the defense. Guys that play hard, that play fast, and uh, you know and he's he's going to bring an attack style mentality. And uh, you know like I think I mentioned um, you know on the radio show and just throughout the last week. I mean, this is one of the one of the best defensive coordinators in college football um, you know his defense have always have always performed very well and uh, you know, it's gonna be a great challenge for our guys um, you know not totally knowing exactly what to expect but we're gonna have to adapt and adjust on the on the run as, as we get into the game Notre Dame's obviously lost some pieces from last year, but but that defensive line looks like it's going to be a great challenge. What what do you see from them? Is there anything specifically you could talk about the challenges they present? Yeah, I mean they got great length. Uh, you know, play extremely hard. Uh, you know, physical bunch up front. Um, you know, coupled with you know what uh, Coach Freeman has, has shown to do with different movements and and uh, you know the way that he um, you know is able to disguise some of the the ways uh, that that he's going to be able to bring pressure, whether it's you know blitzing linebackers or or different uh, run stunts up front. Um, you know, he does he does a great job with the, his disguises. I'm, I'm expecting multiple fronts. Um, you know, to be able to jump in and out of three and four down three and four down sets. And uh, you know, I think they've got you know really good depth and they've got guys that have uh, that have great experience. That have been productive at, at uh, you know throughout their their careers there at Notre Dame. So uh, um, this is going to be a great challenge for our guys up front, and um, you know it's it's going to take a great effort. Another new piece for them, and I guess not new to college football, but new for them is the quarterback Jack Cohen. I guess what have you seen from him, and how do you anticipate they might use him differently than kind of how Wisconsin did? I mean, he's a he's a very talented player, and he's had great success. You look at uh, you know the success he had at, at Wisconsin. Um, you know, he's played in big games. He's played in in uh, um, you know probably adverse atmospheres. You know, being in the Big Ten. 
you know, during his time there, and uh, you know, he, he was he was out this last season due to injury. But um, you, know, you know, the thing that you hear uh, coming out of Notre Dame is just the, you know how consistent, how accurate, uh, you know, the kind of the game manager that he is, and uh, you know, he's making guys around him better. So uh, you know, we know that uh, this is not a uh, you know, he's a he's a new starter at Notre Dame, but you know, he's got a lot of uh, very productive collegiate experience, and uh, um, you know, we, he's gonna he's gonna do a great job for them, and you know, we've got to try to make him uncomfortable. Um, with what we do and, and, and obviously how we attack. In preparing for Cone, how much do you go back and look at what he did at Wisconsin versus studying what Notre Dame does tendency wise as an offense? You know, it's it's, it's a little bit of a balance. Um, you know, you try to try to look at a, at a guy, and plus, it's it's not just. You know his time at Wisconsin. But that was a few years back as well, and so you know we're going to get it. We're going to get our best sense of him as a player. So we will, look, you know, look, uh, you know, look back, and yeah, you know, that's the good thing about being in in week one is we do have more time, and we've had time throughout the summer uh, to be able to to, uh, to look at those things. But you know, you also try to put a put a balance to, to Notre Dame and who they are, what they, you know, what they're all about. It's a very versatile offense uh, in in how they attack, and so uh, when it's, when you look at the run game, the passing game, the different ways that they're going to try to uh, you know, you know, move him around, and uh, um, you know they can do just about all. And so uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a great challenge. And you know, we kind of look, at, we have looked at all of it uh, in, in getting the best sense of, of what to expect. Uh, Travis J, Corey Wren, Jakai Douglas, all listed as as kickoff returners for you guys. Can you talk a little bit about that group and collectively that the skill sets that they bring to the table there? Yeah, all very explosive players. Uh, you know, guys that I uh, think have home run hitting uh, capabilities. Um, you know. That is a that is a unit that has to be better for us this year, and um, you know it's it's a, a you know, something that you know throughout throughout my coaching career, you know we put a lot of time and emphasis in in the development of of, of our return units, and uh, you know we've seen great production over the years, and, and that's something that you know our guys have really bought into. Uh, we know that this week is going to be you know one of our one of our biggest challenges. Uh, Notre Dame is traditionally uh, um, you know great on their kickoff kickoff coverage units, and um, you know they have guys that play extremely hard, a lot of returning players. Uh, that uh, that um, you know that we saw this past year, and so. Uh, but I think you know, those returners and the, and the buy-in that we're having with our guys from a special teams, uh, um, you know, perspective. I mean, it's it's something that we need to to be very productive in. Sticking with special teams, Ryan earned the kicking job according to the depth chart. What did he do in the preseason? What's been the growth with him just in the sense of being more consistent? Yeah, I mean, it's just hitting right on that. I mean, just the consistency. Ryan's a very talented young man, has a, has a strong leg. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think he's had a great camp. And uh, we put him in a lot of challenging situations, and he's just continued to respond. Um, you know, he's day in and day out. You know, he's, he's in a great place. And uh, we've got all the confidence in the world in him. And what he's going to be able to do, uh, you know, as, as our kicker. Back earlier in the summer, you talked about, you know, you you wouldn't be against using two quarterbacks if it if you thought it helped the team win. Now that you've seen them both and how they operate, do you think that's going to be the case throughout the season, or or how do you envision the quarterback situation playing out? Well, you know, I'm I'm really excited about that quarterback room and the, the competition that we have. Uh, you know, the the versatility of skill sets that uh, which which these guys bring. But uh, um, you know, we're always going to explore uh, you know each opportunity of how we can put our playmakers in a position to to be able to shine in, in a variety of different ways. And so uh, I'm excited about uh, that room and uh, you know. What they bring to this offense. You talked last night on the radio show about I think you said eight guys on the offensive line you feel kind of feel good that can help y'all win games I guess how do you feel about that group how much better do you feel relative to a year ago? Well you know they've really grown and uh, not only have they grown physically but just with their their confidence in in the, in the mental aspect of it and you know, it's something we put a uh, uh, a real emphasis on is it just in that consistency of being where you're supposed to be. You know, making sure that we're making the right calls, we're playing with our eyes. Uh, you eliminating some of the the you know mental mistakes that we that showed up at times that uh, you know that create some of those negatives. And uh, you know, that's that's something that we you know, we can't have. We got to be able to play ahead of ahead of the chains. Uh, you know, their offensively it allows us to be more aggressive. It allows us to um, you know really kind of get the 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 full gambit of uh, of what we want to do offensively. And so um, you know those five guys up front. Uh, you know they they have to be consistent and uh, you know you know, play with the right mentality and you look at the, the the experience that we have in that group you know whether it's some of the guys that are you know that are younger in their in their college career and, and guys even that have played a lot of football that that I feel can can be a sixth seventh or eighth guy that can get in the game and, and help us be productive so uh, it's it's a, still a lot of competition that's uh, that's um, 
that's showing up day in and day out of practice. But uh, you know, I feel I feel uh, you know much better uh, than where we were even a year ago, just with the depth that we have and and the and the uh, the talent that we have up front. Mike, with the depth chart we got out, uh, linebacker, Kalen Deloach, DJ Lundy, two guys that are up there, don't have a ton of college experience. So what did you see from those guys in camp that elevated them to be starters? I mean, just the, the consistency in play, the mentality of, of uh, you know, how uh, – you know, you know how they have how they have grown in really in all ways. I mean, from a, from a physical development to um, you know the the, fit, the the physicality play in and play out, and just a, a relentless pursuit to, to what to what they're what we're trying to accomplish defensively. And you got guys like Stephen Dix who's played a lot of football. Um, you know that I, I feel is going to be a very productive player for us as well. But you know when as as you're sitting there and you compete day in and day out, you're looking for the consistency. You're looking for guys uh, that are are that are able to make plays and that are they're making plays in space. They're guys that are that are able to, um, you know, you know, go sideline to sideline, but also you know, you know, just put that tough the, the toughness and um, you know, just relentlessness, uh, you know, with their in between the tackles as well. And and I, that's what I think. Yeah, DJ Kalen, uh, you know, really all those linebackers have been have been you know pushing to do. And uh, you know, I'm excited about what they what they all bring, and in really the development of a, of Amari and how he's continued to grow and, and the versatility that he shows. Uh, I'm I'm excited about uh, about the steps that have been taken by that uh, linebacker group. You mentioned some of the reasons there's a lot of excitement going into this game with the full crowd and uh, top 10 opponent. What are things you, you as a coaching staff can do to try to make sure that the players don't exert too much energy in the hours and days leading up to the game? You know, it's a, it's about you know taking care of the one play that's in front of us, and uh, there is going to be a lot of emotion. I mean, there's, there's uh, and, and something that that we embrace. You know, I, I want them to be emotional. I want them to have passion. I want them to have energy. Uh, but it's it's you know everybody can have a great plan as they go into it. But you know, there's going to be there's going to be moments that show up you know Sunday night where you might get knocked down on your butt. And you got to be able to get up. You got to be able to stay focused. You got to you got to make sure that that each play that you don't let the the atmosphere, you don't let the environment, you know, distract you from what your job is. And make sure you're playing with great technique, great fundamentals, and then you know being able to respond to the good and being able to respond to the bad. And you know, that's that's where the consistency has to show up for our team. You know, we are a, we are an emotional group, and uh, you know that that can be a really good thing. But at times it can also you know almost almost hinder you for what you're trying to accomplish. And so you know it. As we go through, you know, our fall camp, you know, we talked about why, you know, why do you go to Jacksonville? Why do you, why do you put your guys in, in different situations? Because I want them to be able to to be confident in a response, especially when they cannot control what's going on around them. And so, um, you know, Sunday night, you know, we need we need a, a great crowd. We need a great atmosphere. Um, you know, and our guys, you know, it's it's about just the play that's in front of them. Don't and, and not to get carried away or distracted by the things that are that are on the outside. And so. Um, you know, I think they're embracing that, and uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, to seeing them go in, uh, and implement that throughout the course of the game. You know, for McKenzie, it's been such a long road, arduous road for him back. Five days away, I guess, from the opener. Do you sense that he's at peace with where he's at and, and what your plan is for him? Yeah, yeah he's really excited, and uh, you know, it's fun. It's just fun seeing him as, as he's you know getting into game week, and uh, you know, an opportunity that's in front of us, and um, you know, it's it's going to be a special moment. You know, it's a special moment for him. You know, all the work that's gone into it, um, being able to get to this point. Um, you know, the way that he's that he's you know since January come into this team and really um, you know been able to invest in his teammates, and you know, he's had to learn a new language. He's had to learn a new offense. Uh, you know, he is, he's really adapted well, and I, I think he's made, made not only the quarterback room, but, uh, you know, made this football team better. And, um, you know, Sunday night's going to be special for him. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about, uh, you know, what he brings and, and uh, you know, what the, what the future is going to hold as, as, as he uh, continues on, on this path for, uh, for this season that's ahead. Coach, we've been able to talk to you since Sunday. You had the, uh, the dress rehearsal and the thing, we saw the video of Dennis Briggs breaking the rock. And he came out as a first teamer. I mean, you've talked about him a lot during the preseason camp, but really to to get to that level, what has he done that's been so special the last few weeks? I mean, he just worked, man. I mean, he's he's worked in in every in every way. You know, the the uh, guy that came in was a defensive end when he first got here. Has you know made the transition. You know, you look at you look back to, to last season, and um, you know Dennis you know didn't play the first part of the year. You know, was was uh, was actually an early opt out. Decided to come back and and, and rejoin the team. Um, you know, play in a new position. And you know he played he played interior on the interior line, and so it was still trying to fit, kind of figure that out. Um, you know through the spring, 
you know, the work he did with Coach Storms in the weight room, and then you know, watching him, uh, you know, probably one of the most most consistent performers we had uh, in fall camp. I mean, just the energy, the effort, uh, you know, the, playing with technique, and you know, just a very disruptive force, uh, you know, when he was out there. And so, uh, I thought it was a, a well earned, um, you know, accolade to, to for him to be able to uh, to break that rock and just uh, the, some, some uh, you know, the symbolic approach of, of what it is just to continue to get better. And that's what he's done. And um, you know, I'm, I'm excited about what this year can hold for Dennis. He, he's a man of very few words, and uh, you know, even even uh, you know, there Sunday night didn't have much to say, but just thanking his teammates for what they mean to him, and uh, and you know, the 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 growth of that that he's had. You know, could, he attributes that to that support that he has around him for, as a, from coaches and players involved. And so, um, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to great things for Dennis this year. We'll go to Ira. Notre Dame obviously has really good backs, but but traditionally that program has just run the ball exceptionally well. What is it about programs like that, and what, is it anything they do differently? Is it the commitment to the run? What makes the running game so special? Uh, I mean, I think it's both. I mean, they're very well coached. I mean, they, they know they know what they're trying to accomplish when it comes to uh, uh, you know to the run game, and uh, you know it starts up front, and then when you have that coupled with you know great tight ends and, and running backs that uh, that run with a true purpose, I mean it's it's a challenge to stop. And uh, you know, so you know, we know. That you know, going into this week, you know, we're going to have to do, we're going to have to do a great job up front. We're going to have to fight. We're going to have to do everything that we can, uh, not only to to be in our gaps, but to make sure that you win them when you get there. And uh, and that's where when you you add talented backs and, and Notre Dame has, um, you know, you know, at, going into this year, I think that's going to be one of the strengths of their team. You know, having multiple backs, I'm fully expecting to see some two back sets. And you know, being able to have you know multiple guys on the field at at, at one time because of the versatility of what they show. Um, but you all. You also get get to see that with just the overall toughness that's within the program, and, and that's something that uh, that we aspire to to be, and that uh, that we aspire to have as well. So, um, you know, it's something that, that we're definitely pushing forward to that consistency, so that can be a year in and year out uh, you know, trademark of this Florida State team. We'll go to the back for Ryan. Coach, yesterday, uh, Coach Kelly said that he earned a lot of respect for your squad when you two played in South Bend last year. Do you feel like you learned anything about your program after that game? You know, I was, uh, you know, obviously disappointed in the in the outcome, but I was pleased with uh, the the way that our guys competed, and um, you know, that's something that, you know, coming coming into the program last year, you know, we ha we have to be more consistent in just in the overall way that we compete and start to finish, um, you know, good times and and in bad times, and um, that's I, I thought our guys, you know, you know, did that last year uh, in South Bend, um, you know, we still, you know, it showed up where we had some mistakes that. Uh, um, you know, put us in a position where we weren't able to beat a really good team, and uh, you know, and that's something that we've got to eliminate. And we've got to, we, we, you know, effort has to be the minimum standard. I mean, the minimum expectation, and um, you know, and for for us, I mean, that's uh, I'm pleased with what I've seen through the off season, through the summer, through the summer workouts, and just how we've attacked the work that is that is necessary so we can go out there and play to the best of our ability and. To play with great effort and a relentless pursuit, and when you when you do that, if you can then you know be consistent in your performance with your with your technique and fundamentals, uh, you're going to give yourself a great chance to be successful. So um, yes, I was pleased with with how we competed, but uh, you know it's time to take the next step from that. Hey, coach, uh, curious about the the vaccination rate for the team now. Are you at 85 percent? How close are you? And then I guess as a follow up. Dr. Myron Roll, Myron Roll has spoken to the team. Dr. McCullough, you've had other people speak. What kind of message have they delivered to your players as far as encouraging them to get educated, get vaccinated? Well, I mean, I'll say that, you know, we, we are uh, over 90% of our team that have started the process of, of, of you know, towards full vaccination. Uh, you know, I will put that out there. You know, we are we're getting closer every day. Um, you know, when it comes to that, and you know, I appreciate uh, you know, Dr. Meyer Roll. I mean, everybody. You know, and all the different people that have come and spoke to our team. And for us, it's about providing. Uh, it's about providing education. And uh, you know, they're you know, these are you know, 18 to 22 year old young men that uh, you know, when you, you know, with all decisions, just trying to provide them uh, the information that is that is necessary for them to to feel confident in any decision that they make. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for that. And, you know, obviously we're, we're well on our way and, uh, you know, we're going to continue on with that process of, of uh, making sure guys are being safe and, and uh, putting ourselves in the best position to go out there and, and, and play this game. All right, we've got time for a couple more. We'll go to Harder. Oh, sorry, we're going to go to Asma. I got to I, I would need a, I needed time to stall to think what my question was going to be. 
Uh, but coach, just for you, last season, I know we talked about how out of the season it was, but how much you kind of learned about your team. How much do you think Jordan learned about playing the position of quarterback last year, and just how much better off is he now, having gone through last year? And what sort of changes have you seen him in, in terms of processing things and talking to you guys between reps of practice, things like that? Yeah, I mean, it's you look back to last year, and and really, you know, it's it's almost unfair to judge Jordan off of that that season. I mean, he you know he missed all of fall camp. I think the first time he practiced was was the week one. You know, going into to the to the first week, and so you know really with with all the the opportunities, it was just he was really kind of just thrown into it. And um, you know, I think he was available for maybe five games last year, and it just was such a limited basis of being able to to get a rhythm, to understand you know the the fundamentals, techniques of, of what we try to do offensively from a timing aspect. Um, you know, he's a great talent, and then uh, you know, but now you fast forward that. To have a have a complete off season, to have spring practice, to have a, a um, you know a fall camp. I mean, you know, he's he's growing each and every day, and I think he's a um, you know an incredible quarterback. I think he's got a, a a great future in front of him as he's as he's you know gaining in that confidence. And you know, it's you know, anybody that you know watched the spring game and you see the steps that that he's taken as a as a player. I mean, he's. He, he's invested, and um, you know I'm I'm excited about Jordan's future and just uh, what he means to this program and and uh, you know just that continued growth. That last one will be Ira. We've heard a lot from the players about the leadership from guys like Keir Thomas and Jermaine and some of these transfers that came in. Did you did you know that that was part of what you were getting in those guys and, and how beneficial has that been? Yeah, I mean it was honestly it was a necessity and, and guys that, that we were bringing in as um, you know you go and. The youth of our team. I mean, I really, I, I really like this team. I like the guys that we have, the character that they have, um, you know, the passion that they have. Uh, but a lot of them haven't, haven't necessarily, you know, ha had the example of, 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 you know, you know, in front with just all the change that we've ex we've experienced within our program. It's always been, it's been different. It's changed, and so you know, for for any player that we brought in, you know, it was important that they knew that yes. You know the production on the field. Um, you know the the skill set that they bring. Yeah, that's important. But you know, I wasn't going to bring somebody in into the program that didn't you know didn't embody the characteristics of of what it is to be a Florida State Seminole. And with the work ethic, with the the um, the importance of relationships and and being able to to make those around you better. I mean, it was something that was that was talked about with all of the, every person that came into the program. Um, is something that that I was going to expect. And you know, they're still learning a new way of operating as they come here and around our coaching staff and just uh, you know the way that we work day to day. But uh, you know, they they've embraced that. And, and you know, it's it's a, it's a joy to you know for me to be able to see guys that. You know, as they come in, you know, you know we're coaching. You know, we coach hard, and we we push hard, and we you know we challenge those those top players. But to see them, you know, receive that that coaching, and then you know, be able to encourage some of the young guys as as they're growing and developing. It's uh, you know, that's what you want to see within a team. And uh, you know, I, I I like the I, I like the relationships that I've seen you know build within this team. I thought you know even in fall camp, um, you know, guys that only been here for a short period of time, just how they kind of embraced embrace that mindset, and um, you know, as, as these guys have come together I mean that's going to be a, a critical factor for us this this fall and um, you know we know there's going to be some great moments uh, that are going to show up uh, you know Sunday night and there's gonna be some hard moments that are going to show up Sunday night but if, when you have a team that comes together you're going to be able to respond and uh, and put yourself in a position to achieve success and uh, you know that's what we need all right guys thanks so much